The good examples of uh, blockchain applications in government services is in former Soviet Republic of Georgia, where the entire land registry of the country and all the transactions and buy-sell agreements for property now are using blockchain, which makes it very secure, very efficient and very quick. Also, there are some other uses of blockchain, potentially electronic auction systems, smart contracts for buy-sell agreements for properties. And we have some of those use cases in Republic of Georgia as well as uh, in Ukraine. I think that uh, governments implementing blockchain services is a great idea. Uh, I think that in general, the technology which is provided by blockchain is a technology that um, actually provide more advanced technological solutions for uh, the same things that government are providing solution for today. Just like uh, email was providing a solution to mail that was provided by governments and even uh, YouTube in many cases provided a solution for television that was provided by governments. Today, currency issuance is a service provided by governments that um, it's not dependent on them alone anymore because now you have alternative uh, as well as judicial system like um, when you're talking about the legal framework, this is something that the government provide and this is something that smart contracts addressed in a very innovative way. So I think that we will see a lot of government services and main thing is bureaucracy that is going away thanks to the blockchain because the blockchain is really about replacing bureaucracy. It's about providing online proofs for anything that you need proof for. And the fact that we have that technology today means really exciting thing for how we will organize and collaborate between ourselves in the future. Well, I think that there's a huge opportunity for the blockchain to replace a lot of the things that the government does. And so blockchain is probably the best chance we have at having a much smaller government. A lot of things that have a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of people involved in them and those systems, they're very bloated and blockchain can sort of streamline them and do a lot of things in a much simpler manner and with a lot more transparency to make sure that things actually get accomplished and we don't need so much government intervention in our lives. In the most recent study that was published by G20, it is stipulated that in the next 15 to 20 years, all G20 countries will be using blockchain one way or another. It is hard to speculate how long it will take for the entire world to switch to blockchain, but already today, in countries from Asia to Africa to Europe, South America, United States, we see different blockchain applications, whether it's government services or enterprises. As most of speakers and experts think, I um, also have a, I have a strong opinion that blockchain will be a strong enabler uh, for governments and the public sector. What makes a difference probably is that I'm, for example, not a strong believer of uh, private blockchains, and I think a government needs to work with a uh, permission blockchain. So when it comes to liquid democracy and to, to public blockchains, people will understand government as a service, and governments right now don't act as a service to citizens. So I. I I think there's a big paradigm that needs to be resolved, but in my opinion, people will place their bet. I mean, that's why I'm in this environment, because I'm a strong believer of public blockchains and tokens, and that people can really interact peer-to-peer -peer and bypass a lot of intermediaries or regulators, which doesn't necessarily mean that I promote tax fraud or turning back uh, to public uh, system. I'm, I'm in fact in the business compliance uh, or in the compliance business in crypto. Generally, public sectors everywhere, by definition, don't work, don't tend to lead to technological innovation. So everyone is free to carry out a project. I'm, I'm more interested in private individual projects than in governments trying to do things in this area. I think governments have other roles and building blockchains is probably a little bit outside the, their role, I would say. So the first smart government was uh, the government of Dubai when, uh, when the ruler came out in uh, November 2016 and said that Dubai will be the first smart city in the world by 2020. He didn't say if it was January 2020 or December 2020, but it doesn't matter. He gave himself four years, hired the smartest people, to run that piece of the government called Dubai Smart City. Started doing lots of conferences in the crypto world. 
and eventually they could become the gold standard of what it is to be a smart city and then everybody else should copy, which, you know, copying somebody else is the greatest form of flattery. In the Netherlands we have many implementations of blockchain in government services uh, and you can see many different countries where they are trying, in Dubai, in Singapore, certain industries, especially in the ports, you know, they are doing projects with blockchain and I think there is great value of the adoption of blockchain technology in government services. Look at Lithuania, what they're doing there. It's perfect. Now this is going to happen. They are one of the early adopters.